In this video, we're going to go through the basics of creating your own custom functions in Power Query so that you can reuse it and make your lives a lot easier. We're going to go through the setup step by step and also show you the scenarios in which creating a custom function would be useful. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fenan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Functions are a very helpful component in programming that allows you to process specific tasks in your code without it being too bulky or overcomplicated. Typically, in your code, you'd write the function then give it an input, which it will then process, and output you the result. If you've used Excel or DAX before, you've most likely used functions already. So for example, if you wanted to sum a column here in Excel, you'd start by writing the function that you want to use, in this case, the sum function. We'll give it an input, which is saying, what do you want to add up? We'll just give it the column B. Once you hit then enter, it will output you the total of that column. You don't actually see the process of summing up all the values. You simply invoke the function and it gives you the result. There are two main languages that you can use in Power BI. DAX, which you can use to create measures, calculated columns and tables. And then there's Power Query formulas, which you create when you're transforming your data in Power Query Editor. Today, we're going to cover how to create custom functions in the Power Query formulas. Here's an example table that I built. I have Power Query opened in my Power BI reports, and I've simply created a table with products and their total sales. What I want to do here is to create a custom function that converts my sales in British pounds into US dollars and I want to display it as a new column here in my table. Before we can start converting, we first need to change the type of this column into a number because it's a text type at the moment. Here's where I'll first demo you how to use functions in Power Query. So first you need to add a custom column here, add a column, and then in the custom column formula, you will use a function called number.fromText. This creates numbers from the common text format. So whatever you pass in here that is a text, it will try to convert it as a number. So we're going to simply use sales column here. We close it, and that is the function done. We hit OK. Voila, so you now have the data in our sales GBP column, except that this is now in a number format. We don't actually need to do that. I just wanted to demo you how the formulas work. So we can simply delete that step and you can just change this to a decimal number that will just make sure that that column is a number type column. So currently there is no Power Query function that we can use to convert GBP to USD, but with a bit of Power Query knowledge, we can create one for ourselves. So first, let's start by creating a new query here. So we'll do new source, blank query, then from here we'll hit advanced editor, and this is where we will create our function. So remember that this function we're creating converts GBP into USD. So for this, we'll need three things. We'll need the input, which is the GBP input from the column, the process, which will be the converting value to convert it into USD, and then the output, which is the value that we want to see in USD. So first, we will start by naming the input. So we will name it GBP value, like this. 
Well, surrounded by an open and closed parenthesis, this defines this value as an input value for our function. And then we'll follow it by the goes to operator, which will be the equals and the greater than sign like this. And then we will simply do the process here of the conversion. So we will say whatever the input is multiplied by 1.25, which is the conversion factor for converting it into USD. And that should be it. So we'll hit done and that will create a new function for us. We'll just rename it just to make sure that this is something that is recognizable, GBP to USD. And there you go. So you've now created a simple function that converts values that you put in it into USD. You'll know that you've created a function if you can see this FX icon next to the item itself. Now, if you want to invoke this function, for example, just return it the value, you can do it here as an example. So let's say we want to convert 20 pounds into USD, hit invoke, that will simply give us the calculation and output us the USD value of that 20. So pretty simple, right? Now, if you want to invoke a function that you've created, you can do it here. So, so let's go back to our sales table here. You can invoke a function to use here by simply going to add column, invoke custom function. So you can select what function you want to invoke. So GBP to USD, we'll name this one sales USD. And then it will ask you for the GBP value that you want to feed into the function. In this case, we want to give it the sales GBP. So you will see that it converts those GBP sales into USD sales. Another way that you can invoke a custom function is by simply creating a new custom column and treating the new custom column as a normal function. So let's try and do that. So GBP to USD is available to us, uh, the same as other functions. We'll open it up. It asks for the GBP value, which we'll use sales GBP. Close it and hit OK. You'll see that it does the exact same thing and all we did is call the function the same way that we'll call any other functions. There are a few more things that you can do in the function itself to customize it a bit more because at the moment what we've done is fairly basic so we'll just hit advanced editor and go back to it. First you can set the input and output value data types to make sure it doesn't pass the wrong data types in it. So for example, the GBP value, we always want this as a number. So we'll always ask a number as a column or field that you pass in it. We can even set the value of the output by adding as number as well. At the end of the closing parenthesis here, if you hit done, you will see that now this function asks for GBP value as a number and then it returns a value as a number. The second thing that you can do is you can ask for multiple inputs. So for example, here we've only asked for one value, the GBP value from our users in order to use our function here. If you wanted to add more inputs, you can simply add a comma. Let's rename it, uh, create a new one, conversion rate. As an example, we'll ask as a number. And maybe we want to use it in our process. So in this case, instead of using 1.25, we're gonna use the conversion rates that they give us. So that's it. Hit done, you will see that now, if you go back to here, you will see that the, these two have errored out because we are giving it just one value, but it needs two. So to fix that, we can just simply say 1.25. That is the conversion rate that will give us the value converted. Lastly, the process that the functions do will look a lot more complicated than what I'm showing now. So you can actually create different lines in your Power Query formulas to do different calculations, then output that final value into your function. To do that, you need to wrap your process, which goes after this goes to here, 
with a let and in syntax. So let's start that. So let's. I'm just gonna keep it in the clipboard here. Start a new line. I'm gonna type let. Then I'm just gonna create a tab here, and then I'm gonna declare first a, a variable. Use the value equals conversion rate. So this is the first line of our code. I'm gonna hit comma. And then let's add another thing that we want to do maybe in this process. Maybe we want to, as an example, it doesn't make any sense, but we want to add two in it. So we're gonna create another variable here, new value. And we're gonna say whatever the value, use the value is, and plus two, doesn't really matter. Hit enter. Once you're done, you simply close it with an in. After the in is what the function will output when your users use it. So in this case, we want to give him the new value. So if you hit done, you will see that now if we give it a value 10 and the conversion rate is 1.25, when you invoke that, it will do the conversion and all the lines of code that we added in it, including the multiplying 10 by 1.25 and then adding two on top of it. Great. So you now know how to create a simple custom function in Power Query. Let's look at a more realistic way you'd use custom functions with. Here is a list of support tickets in a table. And with this information, we want to calculate the number of days it took to solve each of these tickets. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, this is pretty easy. I just do ticket solved minus ticket created. But we can't just simply do a math formula here because we want to take into account weekends or any bank holidays in between these dates. So for example, in May 2021, we have the early May bank holiday and the spring bank holiday within the same month. And these tickets are all within this period. So we need to make sure that if we're counting the number of days it took to solve the tickets, we need to exclude any weekends in between along with any bank holidays. This is a great opportunity to use a custom column as the logic of it can be long and you don't really want to repeatedly write it every time you want to calculate the number of working days between two dates. I've already created a custom column here that looks something like this and we actually already covered this in a different video but essentially all it does is a function that requires three things, the start date, the end date, and the holidays as a list. It returns a number, which is the number of days in between those two dates. And then from here in the let, it does a few things, like for example, generating the list of dates between these two dates. Then these two values ensures that it removes any weekends or bank holidays in between this date list. And finally, it counts the days that we have in the lists and outputs it as a value. Now with this function ready for us to use, you just simply go to our tickets here. We'll create a new custom column. And like any other function that is available to you, you can simply use it like this, network days. We'll give it the ticket created date, then we'll give it the ticket solved date, and then we'll give it. We hit OK, and there you go. So now you have a custom function that counts the number of working days between two dates here in Power Query. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create your own custom functions in Power Query to make your lives a lot more easier. Thanks for watching, as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.